The opinions expressed in the following program are not necessarily those of Eastlink Community TV, its sponsors, or partners. Mology's Cooking Experience. Hello, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of Mama G's Cooking Experience, brought to you today by our friends at Eastlink Community TV, Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria. So today what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to praline some nuts, make some homemade trail mix, granola bars, popcorn, and hummus, because today's theme is snacks. So let's just get started and jump right in. First, what I am always do is you always get your pan ready with your parchment. Try not to do this without parchment because what's going to happen is it's just going to stick and make a big giant mess. So get your pan ready, get it nice and hot. I have it at medium and put in about two tablespoons of butter. You want about two tablespoons of butter so that your sugars can caramelize and then that way you will get a nice flavor trusty spatula. So when it comes to pralining, um, you're basically roasting a nut in a sugared, like a melted sugar caramel sauce. It's delicious. People use pralines to go on top of ice cream. Uh, they put it in uh, pecan pies. I know, most people do pecan pies and they just put the nuts in without roasting it. But if you take the time to praline your nuts or even just to roast your nuts regularly, you're gonna take that pie from here to here. So give it a try next time. Okay, so I got, what did I say? About two tablespoons of uh, butter there. Let's do about two tablespoons of brown sugar. No, let's do three, let's do three. I first learned how to praline nuts when I worked at um, Deerhurst Resort in in, uh, in Huntsville. Man, that place was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. All right. So you're just gonna melt all of your stuff together. Butter, brown sugar. Let's put in, uh, so this is a substitute. I'm using a blueberry honey. Again, about three tablespoons of it. But the, a lot of people, what they would use like on the internet, their recipes, they all say corn syrup. Let's try to avoid corn syrup. It's not good for you. You know what I mean? Don't do it. Okay, so look nice and fast. It comes to a boil. You're gonna see the foam of the fat and the sugars mixing. All you're gonna do is let that come to a boil. Da -da -da -da. See, nice, add your nuts. I'm also gonna praline some walnuts. Ah, let's use them all. There, nice and simple, okay? Just put it in your pan, coat them up. Simple. Doesn't take a lot of time, not lots of effort. Okay, look, it came to a boil. Then what you do is you slap them onto your pan. Literally took two minutes. Slap them onto your pan. Spread them out so that they're not all touching. Because then you're just gonna have a big candy bar. Throw them into your oven for like 15 minutes at 415, then let them sit, and that's it. Nice and easy. Okay, so I've taken my uh, praline um, walnuts and pecans out, and they smell so nice, I'm telling you. We need to invest in some smell-o-vision. So, now what I'm gonna do with my nuts, now that they've cooled a little bit, is I'm gonna make a trail mix. Now why would I make my own trail mix? 
Well, there's a few reasons. One, you know what you're getting. And, and two, you get to choose how to make it yourself. When you go and buy the predisposition, like the bags of like this mix or that mix, um, you don't really know what you're getting because they're coating that stuff in like preservatives so that it stays nice and fresh in the bag. Forget it, don't do it. Just make your own, it takes two seconds. It's cheaper and you get to make what you want with it. So I'm a big fan of dried fruit. My biggest favorite fruit is dried cherries. Did you know that a quarter cup of dried cherries before bed has the same amount of natural melatonin uh, that you're, that for you to help you sleep versus popping a melatonin pill? So eat the cherries, don't take the pill. So I've got myself here some Thompson raisins because I think everybody should be eating raisins. Keeps you regular. People love it. I've got here some dried uh, cherries and some, uh, what do you call those things? Cranberries, I couldn't remember the name. Okay, and pepitas. What are pepitas? So you're cleaning out um, a pumpkin and you're taking out your pumpkin seeds. Well, a pepita is what's inside the pumpkin seed. Now you can buy these raw, salted, hulled, all that wonderful jazz, but these ones are just lightly roasted, no salt. Oh yeah, that's the other thing. There's no salt in this one, where some people, uh, some places, it's so salty, and you go and grab a bite, and you're like, ah, you need two bottles of water for your one handful of trail mix. It's gross. So, it's nice and dark. Let's, now, apricots. You can put apricots in, I put apricots in, but and you can put them in whole, but don't do it, I, I don't like them whole. It's too chewy, you're committed. Just nice slices, nice and easy. So what do I do with this trail mix? Well, I can throw it in a baggies, I can put it in a jar, and as long as the jar is sealed, you're talking like six, seven months of uh, freshness, so you don't need to work. And it depends obviously with how much your fruit that you're buying is fresh, right? But keep it in the car, keep it in your purse, put it in your backpack, you know? It's always good to have a nice high protein, high fiber snack. Instead of grabbing for the bag of chips, just grab yourself your own trail mix, okay? It's very easy, throw it together. I'm throwing in my candied nuts here. Look at these things, so beautiful. So beautiful. Okay, ooh, ooh, so much sugar. Okay, just give them a little mix. So, see they're sticky? So when you mix them, the, the fruit and the, the seeds are sitting, sticking to the nuts. So you get like kind of like a cluster. So there you go. Nice and easy, nice and simple. And you can add anything you want to this. If you want to put M&Ms in there, go ahead. I don't think you should, but just do what you want. Um, you can add different kinds of nuts, different kinds of fruit. Just go out, find stuff that you really enjoy eating, and just throw it together. But make one thing sure, that you don't add any salt and you don't add any fat. Any fat. The fat's going to make it go rancid. Okay? So there you go. Nice and easy snack for the go for you, for all of your friends. Mama's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. So now in this part, what I'm going to show you how to do is how to make your own granola bar. Granola bars, as you know, are a favorite snack of all kids everywhere. They're easy, they're quick, they're high fiber, good protein. But when you go to the store and you buy the prepackaged ones, me as a mom, I feel terrible sometimes because I'm just like, oh my God, I might as well just send her to school with a chocolate bar for crying out loud. So I've learned over the years to just start making my own. So what I've done here on this pan is I've roasted some hemp hearts, some steel cut oats, and some coconut, which is gonna be our, our base for our granola bar. There's not many kids out there that I know that don't enjoy a good granola bar. You know, 
kids love that stuff. So because we're living, you know, trying to be healthy, we're going to put in some, um, some uh, sunflower seeds. I'll just put them all in. And pepitas, because I love pepitas. And they've got good crunch, you know? My kid likes her, her granola bar to be crunchy, not, not soft and chewy. She's always like, Mom, I want the one with the nuts. And I'm like, ah, you can't have them. So then I've got some sliced almonds here. I'm going to use that. It's probably And your ratios are, you got to watch with your ratios. And what I mean by that is you can't have more of this and not enough um, stuff to, like, hold it together. Okay, so we'll give that a quick little toss. That's fine there. I'm going to, I'm chopping up, no, I'm slicing very finely my dates. Now, I can just throw them in in big chunks, but this is what I'm trying to accomplish. If ever you have sliced a date, you will know how sticky how that date is. Very sweet, very sticky. And when warmed in the oven, when heated in the oven, melts and becomes kind of like a glue, you know? So you kind of want that um, uh, sugar to like go through the granola bar so that you it'll stick naturally versus having to add a corn syrup or that stuff. Like today we're going to add honey to ours, but you know, it's not too bad. It's not too bad. So you're probably noticing my super cool, awesome apron today. And this apron was donated to me by Sherry Dubois. And Sherry Dubois has a foundation called the Coco Bear Foundation, which um, she collects donations and brings awareness to people uh, who have or are no people who are young uh, teens, teens and young adults who suffer with mental illness and drug addiction. So please take two seconds, go to cocobearfundraiser.com and check it out and it, just read her story. That's all I'm asking, just read her story. Thank you, Sherry, for these awesome aprons. I, we definitely appreciate it here. So back to my granola bar here. I'm almost done chopping up my, my dates. He was a bad date, so he doesn't get a second chance chopping him up. Get it? Ha ha ha. It's my meatball comment of the day. Okay, nice chop. Now, you remember, I, we just did those uh, praline nuts. So there, I'm going to add this in here. Grab our praline nuts. There's enough sugar in here that you're not going to have to. Add it to it. See? I'll melt that stuff up again. Just be careful. I'm not adding extra paper. Give these a quick chop. So obviously, I don't know what your school board is like, but I'm pretty sure that all school boards are no nuts. Um, Abby loves these things. Well, she likes them when they come straight out of the oven. Okay, nice chunky, because you want to be able to bite into them. Now, Oh, we got a straggler. We got a straggler. Look at him. No, I don't want to go in. You're going in. There we go. Break him up. Oh, my God. He's so nice. Okay. Get rid of this. We're going to add some flavoring. So my flavoring of choice is always cinnamon because cinnamon makes everything better. Give it a quick mix not a quick mix give it a nice mix so that everything is nice and incorporated you know mix it all in oh man it smells so nice roasted nuts coconut oh yum 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 okay so here's a few tips one <sighs> be careful with your ratios of of 
honey or, or binder, basically. If you put too much, you're gonna have too soft of a granola bar. If you don't put enough, you're gonna have too, uh, you're gonna have too crispy of a granola bar. So, how, how can you tell, how can you tell? Well, what I do is I, I feel it. Okay, I've got, I'm gonna start off, now I'm gonna put all this in here. Put this all in here. It's probably about a half a cup's worth, but I feel like I'm gonna have to use more. But here is where you can use maple syrup, you can use honey, you can use jam. Uh, try not to use like a preserve, like one that has like chunks of fruit in it, because a preserve uh, is very different. It's very different. Okay. You can do this in a, in a mixer, but I don't recommend it. Okay. Get, get your hands in there. Make sure everything is nice and coated. Nice and sticky. Oh, it smells so good in here. I love, love, love the smell of toasted coconuts. So once you, like, run it through your hands, you can feel it all kind of clumping up. Then all we do is transfer it to our pan, throw it in the oven at 375 for eight to 10 minutes, and then you let it sit, score it up, and that's it. When we come back, I'm gonna teach you how to make your own hummus. Mology's cooking experience. Kitchen and recipe ingredients provided by Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria, 815 Lawrence Street, Sudbury. So now what I'm going to teach you how to do is my favorite and my camper's favorite, my hummus. So I always start off with a pan and some olive oil. Probably about, uh, I don't know, a few tablespoons worth. Keep it handy because you're going to need it for when you're blending it, okay? Got that ha happening. I'm going to slice up. Well, I'm just going to quarter my uh, garlic cloves because it's all going into the mixer anyway. Roast up some garlic cloves in there. There we go. And I put in, I drain and I rinse my chickpeas. And I put in, so this is one can's worth of chickpeas. And I put them in. Now, some people, they don't, they just throw it right into the thing. And I don't like that. I like the flavor of roasted garlic. I like the nuttiness of the roasted chickpeas, like the fried chickpeas. You don't have to do this for long, okay? But while that's happening, we can get some stuff into our mixer while this is roasting. So, tahini. What is tahini? Tahini is a sesame seed paste. It offers your hummus a really nice nutty flavor and, and it acts like a binder as well. So, but tahini, tahini is oil and uh, ses uh, sesame seeds, but you have to mix it because it sets down at the bottom, kind of like oobleck. So, you know, let's add, not crazy amounts, there you go. Tablespoons worth. And you don't have to put it in, but I love it. I love that flavor. Okay, look, it's not taking long. Don't cook these so long that they start popping everywhere. Nice and easy. This is a, a, a thing that I, this is a dish that I make for my vegetarians, uh, just as a snack, just as a snack. I roast these up, I get this happening. And then I'll warm up some like tort uh, pita chips or I'll warm up some um, some uh, nans, you know, some, you know, those like big, big Belgian bagels or Bavarian bagels, 
you know, it's good for dipping on this stuff too. When you're roasting your chickpeas in the pan, don't put your heat too high because you start to splatter and the skin starts to come off the um, chickpeas, which is fine, but the problem is, is then it gets too, uh, too hard. You don't want to, you don't want to crisp them up. Just looking for a nice, lightly roasted nutty flavor. Okay, that's good. My garlic is soft, not too much. I'm gonna transfer all of this into my food processor. You can use an immersion blender if you don't have a food processor. Ow, ow, it's kinda hot. Cast iron pans, use a glove. So I'm just gonna transfer all of this to my, my pot here. Nice and simple. Life is simple. Make your food simple. When you complicate food, you forget steps and it tastes off. Simple things, simple things. So I've got my, that stuff in here. I'm gonna add some lemon juice. Now you can do fresh squeezed lemon, which would be my preference, but sometimes you just don't have it. You know, just use what you got. Go easy on the lemon juice, okay? A little goes a long way. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of a scoop of, probably like a teaspoon of salt. And I use white pepper. I don't use black pepper with hummus because it leaves little black flecks and people aren't sure what that means. Especially kids, especially kids. So, and again, white pepper goes a long way. What you would normally use for black pepper, you would have, use half for white pepper. The flavor is it's predominant. So, got that all on my, on my food processor. Slap the lid on, pulse it, okay? Pulse, 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 pulse. Then you put it on low mix. So you're gonna see that it's thick. It's fine. This is where you start adding some of your olive oil. Now you can use canola oil, you can use avocado oil, flaxseed oil, whatever oil you would prefer. But traditionally, the better, the nicer the olive oil, the nicer your hummus will taste. You're looking for a smooth, you're looking for a smooth consistency like peanut butter. Now, you can see this one is not a smooth consistency. It's chunky, it's just not enough in there. So I'm gonna add a little bit more oil to it. doesn't take a long time. You know, it's very quick. At this point, this is where I would go and get myself some uh, crackers because it's served it nice and warm. There we go. Look at that. Nice, thin, peanut butter style. This I would just transfer to a bowl, get my crackers ready, and then I would serve it up to my friends and my guests, or my campers, whoever's eating this at the time. Okay guys, so I've taken the granola bars out of the oven and I let them sit probably for about five minutes. You can score them when they come out. It'll be easier for you to break them off. But I just waited a little bit. This is still warm to the touch. And when I, when I pressed it out onto my pan, I went about like a half inch thick. So all you do, obviously, is just run your knife down and cut them the size that you want. I try not to go too big because like sometimes you just don't want to be so committed to a big granola bar, you know? So here we are our beautiful little granola bars. I'll put this off to the side. I finished off our hummus with some olives and I got some nice crackers to go with to dip. It's nice and warm. You can feel the heat coming off there with our trail mix. So these are my three favorite snacks. Thank you for joining me today on Mama G's Cooking Experience brought to you by Eastlink Cable TV and our friends over at Seasons Pharmacy and Culinaria. Thank you for joining me today and I hope to see you at our next time.